In the last video we had some basic plotting from R and this time I want to show you uh, the first high level plot and although this is absolutely not my favorite we will start off with the pie chart because this is one of the most usual um, visual, visual, visualization of data that you probably have already seen a lot. Um, and also since usually I only talk about the technical aspects in this video um, this time, some word of warning, pie charts are most often not the best choice. There must be really good reasons to use them, because on the one hand, um, the human eye is more suited to judge the length of objects, uh, not the area of the objects. And in pie charts, you display the data with using the area. So it is, doesn't fulfill the, the necessities for the... Um, observer to really um, analyze what, what they are seeing. And on the other hand, with pie charts you can only visualize ratios and most often it's more um, honest to talk about uh, absolute numbers than talk about ratios. And both things are better um, realized with bar charts. So most of the time a bar chart is the better option, but nevertheless we will also, I will also show you here how to use do a pie chart here. What you never ever should do is make a 3D pie chart. There is, of course, this is also possible in R, but I will not show this here. If you're really desperate for using that kind of visualization, you will have to look up the help or the internet yourself. There is a way to do that, but we will not see that here. We will just make standard pie charts. Okay. Let's jump into that. I will have to load my data first. And again, I will use the Münzingen data set here. And when we want to visualize uh, ratios here, for example, the amount of different fibular schemes, we have them stored here in the vector in the variable fibular scheme. We can look that up. And I can not immediately throw this into the command itself. So the command for doing a pie chart is just pi. And if I throw just a variable in here, it gives me an error. So we have to make at first a table out of that. And you probably remember that to make a table to count the occurrence of um, values in a, in a vector. We can use this table command. This is the result of that. And if I use the full command here with encapsulated in the pi command. You can see immediately we have here a nice little pie chart already available. So I could stop here, but we will optimize this plot a bit. First optimization might be that we store this table in an own variable that we can use that all the time. So I make here the my table variable that should have this table inside and from now on I can work with this variable. So you can see if I just do now my table as the variable for the pie chart I get essentially the same result. First thing you will probably see and don't like is the color choice here. So we have this baby colors standard pastel colors uh, in R and to have other colors we can specify them in pi just like we did it in with the plot command so again I do this and specify that I want to have different colors with the call option and here I can throw in a vector for example uh, red green and yellow of names of colors that has the same length, this vector, like the cases that we have in our table. And with that, I give, get here um, color, colors with um, stronger colors than the pastel ones that we had before. Um, if you want to know what kind of colors are available, you can use the command color. If I doesn't 
I spell that right. Oh, sorry, colors actually. And you can see here there's a lot of different color names available from, for example, all the grays from all 100 shades of gray, but also other color names. And you can use all of them. For example, let's make that a bit fancy. I want to have Alice Blue, whatever that is. Then Bisk and let's say Chocola. Chocolate. And now I get this kind of color here. So that's nice and easy. If you want to automate that, you can use color palettes, for example, um, the rainbow palette, which gives you the colors of the rainbow. You can see there are other options here. And the only thing I need to specify here is the number of colors that I want to have. So in this case, we have three colors because we have three cases in the table. And when I run this command, I get here in HTML uh, notation different colors. And I can use that here. Instead of this color vector, I was so. And now we have rainbow colors here. And there might be the situation when this data here is uh, dynamic. So you probably would also like to make this dynamic dependent on the number of cases that you actually have. And one way to do that would be to not de definitely throw in here the number, but let's say the length of your table, because this length, we have three cases, the length of the table is three. I move that up here, so three cases, the vector has the length of three. And with that, I get the same result, but should the length of the table change, I would get here a different number for colors and also they were sp would be spread uh, nice. Again, I can also put that into a variable. So my colors could take up the result of that command. And now I can use again here Colors should be my colors. And then we get the same result out here. So with that, we can already define different colors. And that's probably an advantage to just using the pi command as it is. Next thing we probably would like to have are some labels. So currently, um, here are the numbers just written. But it would probably be nice to not only see the ratios here as areas, but to get better understanding of the data, you probably want to have the ratios and probably also the absolute numbers in the description here. And to achieve that, we can change the labels here. So I make another variable that I call my labels. And into that, I could just throw in the uh, values from the table. And when I run this now with labels should equal my labels, you can see this is replaced now with the numbers uh, representing the data. So now we don't know what color represents what case. And to get this information again, we need a legend. You can get that by the command legend. And I have to specify where this legend should be uh, drawn. So I can say um, I could use here numbers. For example, um, re re this represents a coordinate system. I could use 1, 1 to have that up right here, 1, 1. And I have to specify what the, um, what the legend should display. So in this case the names of our table because this 
oops, uh, my table. So, and now we can see here A, B, and C are displayed, but we don't have the link to the colors yet. So I can add, can add here my colors as fill because it's the filling here. And when I do that, you can see now we have red, green, and blue displayed and associated with the labels here. With this legend, you can also specify a color, which means then the line color, for example, what color the border should have, and a lot of different other um, parameters. For example, also this CX, which means the size of the um, of the labels. I will just use that to make them a bit smaller, 0.7. And now we have the smaller label uh, legend plot over the bigger one. To get rid of the bigger one, we have to again make the plot and add the legend. And there we have that now. So you probably also would like to make this label to um, visualize not only the absolute numbers, but also the percentages. And to do that, we have to glue pieces of uh, information together. And for that, we can use the paste command. So I use paste here. And at first, I want probably to have the, uh, the absolute numbers. And then I want, want also to add something, for example, opening bracket, then um, the percentages. And to get the percentages, you probably remember we had the command prop table. With that, we get the percentages here. And I can use that here. And then I close the bracket again. And from that, I have some new labels. Probably it would be nicer to specify that we have a number of cases here. And you can also see, and we have the n equals to, you can also see that here is a empty space because paste always puts a space in between as a separator. And we can change that by specifying sep should equal to nothing. So just two quotation marks. And then we have it like that. Now we have to add the spaces ourselves. So here should be a space. Now we have something that looks kind of nice, except for that this percentage is still very long. So we might like to round that a bit. Round. Let's round that to four digits um, after, after the decimal separator and multiply that by 100 to get percentages. Oops, I did an error here because this should actually go over here. So now we have this and also specify that we have percentages by just giving the percent sign here. Now this looks cute. Okay, I can use my labels again after that. Now we have display like that. That's already kind of nice, except for that we probably also like to have here the space. Good. Now I probably would like to have the legend on the other side, I specified the legend position here with two numbers, but I call it, can all, could also use uh, something more literal, let's say top left. And now we have the legend here in the top left corner. So again, everything. Good. Next step might be that we also specify um, the case number or the case name here. Uh, not only in legend. And to do so, again, I can change my labels and I add also the names of, the t of my table here. 
and now this on the one hand I also had to have to add an, a space here but also this becomes now quite long and we might like to make a two-line statement here and to do so I can just introduce a specific, specific, uh, specific character that's the um, um, reverse uh, um, backslash and an n and backslash n means new line so with that we have a line break introduced here and now you can see we have the name and a line break and then our specific information last thing we probably would like to have is to give the total number that's represented here and we can use the title command for that our main title might be um, let's say fibula schemes and the subtitle should equal to the sum of my table so this gives us the total number of cases and with that probably we paste that also with n equals to and plot again oh, and I shouldn't forget the closing brackets here so and now we have a complete plot with a title a subtitle giving us the number of cases and uh, labels here on the individual parts where we can see the name of the case and the number of cases and also the percentages and additionally here a legend specifying the colors okay that's for now now we have a quite complete pipe chart and next time i will show you how to achieve the same with the most of the time better bar plot